Hi there, my name's Sarah, and here are 10 advanced tips and tricks you might not know about using text in Clip Studio Paint. If you missed my Text Tool Basics tutorial, you might want to give it a watch first. Link up above or in the description below. Otherwise, onward! Tip 1. I'll start with one of my favorites. Click on the Text Tool, then open up the font list and click the gear icon at the bottom. Click Create New Font List and give your list a name. Click here to see a visual display of each font. Select as many fonts as you want, then hit OK. Now, open the font list and select your custom group from this drop-down to only see the ones you chose. It's a great way to organize your fonts. Tip 2. Speaking of fonts, do you have a font you don't want to install on your system, but just want to use for maybe one project in CSP? Open the font drop-down and click Add Font from Files. Choose any font file in TTF or OTF format. You may get this message. Be sure to read it as you might want to turn off the cloud settings, but for now, I'll just click Close. Now the font appears in your font list and you can use it, but only in this program. If you want to remove it, go to the File menu, choose Manage Fonts, Select the font, and click the trash can icon. Any text still using a removed font will remain, but the name will be in red. If you edit it, it'll switch to a default font instead. Tip 3. Support for font ligatures was added in CSP version 2.0. Ligatures are combined glyphs that replace certain combinations of characters, mostly to make them look better together. Not all fonts have them. Here's an example of some common ones in the font Calibri, with ligatures disabled. Open the Text Tool's Subtool Detail palette by clicking the wrench icon and go to Font. When I enable ligatures, you can see the difference. Ligatures are treated as a single character for the purpose of font spacing. If you just want to turn them off for a specific set of letters, go into Edit Mode, select that glyph, and disable ligatures. Tip 4. Click Transformation Settings. Here, you'll find options to rotate your text, skew it horizontally or vertically, and even mirror it. I'm going to copy this layer, and turn the opacity down to 30%. Now I'll flip it vertically, add some horizontal skew, and move it into place. It's that easy to get a quick shadowed effect. Tip 5. You may have noticed the option under Font called Outline. This is fine if you're on a small canvas, but even the bolder option is pretty light on larger art. Fortunately, it's not the only option. Go to Text, and enable Edge. You can adjust the size of this outline, as well as the color. That works on individual text objects, but you can also go to the Layer Properties and click Border Effect to outline the whole layer. Again, you can adjust the thickness and color. Tip 6. You can add colors, gradients, and patterns to your text using a clip layer. Create a new layer above your text. Clip it to your text layer by clicking here. Anything on a clip layer only shows where the layer directly below it is visible. For example, I'll go to the Gradient tool and pick Sunset, one of the defaults that comes with CSP. I'll apply the gradient, and it only shows where my text is. You can put anything on this layer, and it'll show up on your text. And the best part is, your text is still editable. Bonus trick. Copy the layer, and move it to make a shadow. It's a quick way to make pattern text look less chaotic. Tip 7. Likewise, you can make parts of your text transparent with a layer mask. Select your text layer, and click here to add a layer mask. See how the selection changes when I click on each thumbnail? Make sure you have the layer mask selected, the blank one on the right. Select a brush, 
and switch your color over to transparent by clicking here. This is like erasing, except you can do it with any brush. Paint the transparency onto the layer mask and watch parts of your text fade. And yes, still editable. Tip 8. Do you find you're reusing the same settings over and over? Click here to create your own custom text subtool. Give your new subtool a name and press OK. Customize the settings however you want, then click the wrench to open the subtool detail palette. Click Save All Settings as Default, and then click OK. Just a note, it won't work if you click on existing text and try to apply your subtool's settings, but it will work for any new text object you create with this subtool selected. Tip 9. I talked about skewing text, but if you really want to warp it, you'll need to rasterize it. Right-click the text layer and select Rasterize. Rasterizing changes the layer to pixel data, like a drawing. You will no longer be able to edit it as text. Here are three fun ways to warp your text. Method 1. Go to Edit, Transform, Mesh Transformation. Move these handles around however you like, and press OK. Method 2. Under the Filter menu, try out some distort options. This is zigzag, for example. Method 3. Select the Liquify tool and try out its different modes. Push, Twirl, Pinch, and more. Tip 10. Go to the Balloon tool. For this example, I'll stick to the default subtool, Rounded Balloon. Drag a balloon around your text. You'll notice not only has the balloon appeared behind your text, but the layer has been converted from a text layer to a balloon layer. Under Operation, you can go to the Object tool and select the balloon, and your text is now linked and moves with it. You can also select and move the text itself. To make a tail for the speech bubble, go back to the Balloon tool and choose the Balloon Tail subtool. Click and drag to make a quick, straight tail. There's a lot more to the Balloon tool, but I'll save that for a separate video. There you have it, 10 advanced text tricks in CSP. Which one's your favorite? Did I mention any you didn't know? There's still more to come in a supplemental tutorial I'm doing to cover some features more commonly used in non-English languages, like readings, tatechu yoko, and vertical text. Be sure to subscribe and follow me at Miss Red Nebula on Twitter or Instagram for more. I'll see you soon! A big thank you to all of my patrons, with a special shout out to Novatier patron Joe C. Phipps. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to help support future content like this.